Screen ka muna. Great day, Star Louisians. Welcome to the fifth week of our virtual, virtual discussion for our week five lesson. In the beginning of this chapter, we describe real numbers as the numbers that are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the points on the real number line. We identified or you have identified real numbers as a set of all numbers that are positive, negative, or zero. Also, you have encountered the four fundamental operations on integers and applied the combination of these four operations in solving word problems. For this week, you will focus on one of the major subsets of real numbers, which is the rational number. And before we shall start with our discussion, may we have first our opening prayer. Let us all bow our, bow our heads and feel the presence of the Almighty Father. As we say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father God, thank you for this wonderful day. We ask you, Father, to talk to us today. Fill our hearts with joy, our minds with learning, our grass with grass. Our lessons with you, our friendships with kindness. But all fill us with your love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, once again. Good day, Louis and Stars, and welcome again to our week five lesson discussion for rational numbers. So why is it important? Bakit importante sa atin to be rational thinkers? And why is it important to study rational number? And how do we use and explain rational numbers? We all know that rational numbers have two subsets. We have what we call your integers and your non-integers. And last week, you or we have discussed now integers, the concept of integers. But for this time, we focus on the other subset, which is the non-integers. Next. Rational numbers, the set of rational numbers consists of the following. And take note, a rational number is a number that can be written now in the form A over B. Tandaan, yung A and B are integers. And you must also remember that B must not be equal to zero. Yung value ng A nyo, dapat integer siya, at yung value ng B nyo, hindi siya mag equal to zero. Ulitin ko, yung value ng A at saka B are all integers, and the value of your B must not be equal to zero. This includes now integers, terminating decimals, and repeating decimals as well as fractions. Next. Okay. I'd like you to take note that a fraction represents the number of equal parts of a whole. That means to say, ang fractions saan siya galing? Galing po siya sa isang whole or buo. 
okay? Ang tawag sa kapiraso ng buo is a fraction. And a, a fraction, sabi nga dyan, represents the number of equal parts of a whole. And it consists of the numerator and the denominator. When we say numerator, it's the number of equal parts. Or in division sentence, it is what we call now the dividend part. While for the denominator, we are dealing with the number of equal parts that make up a whole. Or in division sentence, it is what we call now the divisor. So yung numerator doon, when we deal with division sentence, that is what we call now the dividend. While for the denominator, that is the divisor. So please take note of that. Next. Under fractions, we have different types of fractional numbers or types of fractions. We have the first one, the proper fraction. Kailan nyo masasabi na ang binigay na fraction ay example siya ng proper fraction? We can only say that the fraction is a proper fraction when the numerator is less than the denominator. Ang ibig sabihin po niyan, kapag mas maliit yung value ng numerator doon sa denominator, that means to say that it's a proper fraction or fraction whose value is less than 1. Examples of, of proper fractions are the following. We have there 1 6, 2 over 11, 4 over 9. If you notice, kung i-compare nyo yung value ng numerator at saka sa denominator dun sa 1 over 6, we all know that 1 is great, is less than, sorry, 1 is less than 6. 2 is less than 11 and 4 is less than 9. So it satisfies now the definition of a proper Fraction. That's why those examples fall under your proper fraction. Pabisaduhin na kapag ang proper, frac ang pro proper fraction ang pinag-uusapan, dapat yung numerator ng fraction ay mas mababa sa denominator niya. Next, we also have what we call improper fraction. When can we say that a certain fraction is an improper one? Or kailan natin masasabi na ang binigay ni teacher ay example ng improper fraction? When the numerator is greater than the denominator. That means to say na kapag mas mataas yung value ng numerator kesa sa denominator, that example of fraction is under improper fraction. fraction. Or in short, these are fractions whose value is greater than 1. So, pagpansin nyo yung pagkakaiba nila ng proper at saka improper. For proper fraction, the fraction, fraction's value is less than 1. While for improper fraction, the value is greater than 1. Okay? And examples of improper fractions are, we can, we can see there 6 over 5, 11 over 2, 9 over 4. We move with the first example, 6 over 5. What can you notice? Correct. 6 is greater than 5 or the numerator is greater than 5. That's why 6 over 5 is an example of an improper fraction. How about 11 over 2? Very good. 11 is greater than 2 or the numerator is greater than the denominator, that's why it's still an improper fraction. Same thing with the last example, which is 9 over 4. That's the idea now of an improper fraction. Let's now proceed to the last type of fractional numbers of, or types of fractions. Mix a number. When can we say that a certain fraction or a, center, a certain number is an example of a mixed number? Kailan nyo masasabi na ang binigay na halimbawa ay isang mixed number? When 
the number whose value is greater than 1 and is made up of a whole part and a fraction part. Ang ibig sabihin lang po niyan ay ang mixed number po ay nag-compose of a whole number and at the same time a fraction. Whole number plus fraction is equal to a mixed number. That's why as you can see, we have their examples like 5, 1 over 6. The whole part there is 5. 5 is a whole number, while 1 over 6 is the fractional part of the mixed number. Making up a mixed number, we have now 5, 1 over 6. We also have 8, 2 over 11. 8 is the whole number part, while 2 over 11 is the fractional part. And the last example would be 11, 4 over 9. So those things are under the different types of fractional numbers. So you have to understand the differences between the three of, of them. That when we talk about proper fraction, the fraction value is less than 1. And the numerator must be less than the denominator. While for improper fraction, the fraction value must be greater than 1, and the numerator must be greater than the denominator. For mixed fraction or mixed number, it must be made up of a whole number or a whole part and a fraction part. Next. We now proceed with con converting mixed numbers to improper fractions. So when you convert mixed numbers to improper fractions, what are the different steps that you need to follow? When we say converting mixed numbers to improper fractions, yung mixed number po ang given. Okay? Papalitan natin siya ng improper fractions. But this time, as we can see, it's the reverse. Okay? This should be converting improper fractions to Mix number. Okay, so kindly go over the title that must be converting improper fractions to mixed numbers. So we now have our first example. You have to understand now or to follow the steps presented in dealing with conversion of improper fractions to mixed numbers. For number one or letter A example, convert 11 over 4 to a mixed number. Now, for this matter, I want you to remember that only improper fractions can, can be converted to mixed numbers. Okay? Yung improper fractions lang ang pwede lang po natin i-convert to improper fractions. Step one, what's the first step that you need to do when you are to convert now improper to mix? You have to divide the numerator by the denominator. So as it is operations on integers, 11, which is the numerator, divided by 4. Okay, you just simply need to simplify or to apply now the concept of division of integers, il ilang 4 meron sa 11. So we have it's equal to 2 with a remainder of Three. Why? Because if we try to check 4 times 2, it's equal to 8. 8 is not equal to 11. Therefore, merong nawawalang tatlo. That's why we have there a remainder of 3. So the answer must be 2 remainder 3 when you divide 11 by 4. Next, step 2. Write down the whole number 2, then write down the remainder 3, as the numerator and just copy the denominator. This now deals, step two deals now on how you are to rewrite your answer based from the division process okay, na ginawa nyo. I -re 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 nyo na siya so that it will become now into a mixed number form or mixed fraction form. So yung quotient, yung whole, okay, whole number na nakuha nyo when you divide 11 by 4 is 2. Yun 2 po, yun na po yung magiging whole number part ng mixed fraction nyo. While the remainder, yung 3 po na nakuha nyo, 
that will become the numerator of the fraction part of your mixed number. And your four there will become the denominator or the divisor four, which is equal to four, will become the denominator of your fraction part of the mixed number. So the answer now is two, three, over four. So when you convert 11 over four to a mixed number, it would be equal to two, three fourths. Next. For letter B, we have 39 over seven. We convert the, the, the improper fraction again to a mixed number. Still, we have to apply the same step. We divide the numerator by the denominator. So 39 divided by seven, Yung 7 meron sa 39. So we have 5. 5 lang po. And multiplying 7 by 5, it will give us a product of 35, which is not actually equal to the dividend, which is equal to 39. So my missing part. And that missing part is what we call now the remainder. Okay? So 4 ang remainder niya. Okay, and then after getting the quotient and the, the, the whole part of the quotient and the remainder, you are now ready to write down the mixed fraction form of the given improper fraction. Copy 5, which is the whole number part of the mixed fraction. Let it be 4. Let your 4 be equal to the numerator. and the divisor 7 will be the denominator part of the fraction. Therefore, your final answer must be 5, 4 over 7. Next. Okay. This time, we convert mixed numbers to improper fractions. A while ago, we just uh, have converted uh, improper to mixed. This time, mix naman tayo to improper. And what will be the process? What are the different steps that you need to follow? Step one, multiply the whole number, five, by the denominator. Okay? As you can see on the given, the whole number part of the mixed fraction is five. You multiply it to the denominator of the fractional part of the mixed fraction, that is seven. Then, after multiplying the whole number in the denominator, you have to add the result to the numerator. So we do it 5 times 7, the whole number times the denominator, which is 7, 35, plus the numerator of the fractional part of the mixed number, that is 2. 5 times 7, that's 35, plus 2, it's now equal to 37. Okay, next, after that, you write down the result, which is equal to 37, as the numerator of, of the improper fraction. And then you just need to copy the denominator. And that 7 will serve as the denominator now of your improper fraction. So what you will just need to solve there is the numerator of your improper fraction. And you can get the numerator by simply multiplying the denominator of the fractional part of your mixed fraction, multiplying it to your to the whole part and whatever is the result you add to the numerator part of the mixed fractional part. So the final answer there is equal to 37 mm. over 7. Next. Letter B. Convert now 11, 3 over 5 to improper fraction. Step 1. So we multiply 5 by 11. After multiplying 5 by 11, we add now the result to 3, which is the numerator of the mixed fraction. And we get now a result of 58. And then we write down the result 58 as the numerator. And then you just need to copy now the denominator of the fractional part of your given mixed fraction, which is equal to 5. So the final answer would be equal to 58 over Five. Next. Okay. We now proceed to equivalent fractions. 
how do we deal with equivalent of fractions? Take note that when we talk about equivalent fractions, these are different fractions but have the same values. That means to say na magkaiba sila pero they are equal in nature. So we say we have example number one, give two fractions that are equivalent to one half. So we, we, we think of a certain fraction that is equal to one half or equivalent to one half. What will you do? We multiply the numerator and the denominator with the same number. Say for example, one times two, we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by two to get a fraction which is equivalent to the given, which is equal to one half. So one times two is equal to two and two times two is equal to four. Whatever will be the product, that fraction now is equivalent to one half. Next, so one half is equivalent or equal to two fourths. Next, please. Okay. Give two fractions that are equivalent to 3 over 8. So what will you do there is you have to, step one, multiply the numerator and the denominator with the same number again. So you have now 3 over 8. We try to multiply it by 4. Okay, so 3 times 4, that is equal to 12. 8 times 4 is equal to 32. Therefore, we can say that 3 over 8 is equivalent to 12 over 32, or 3 over 8 is equal to 12 over 32. That's how simple is the idea of an equivalent fraction. Sir Albert? Next. Yes, ma'am. So I have a question, sir. Yes, ma'am, Rachel. Can you multiply 2 in the numerator and the denominator, aside from four, can we use other numbers such as two? Yes, exactly, Ma'am Rachel. Yes, we can also use other numbers to multiply both from the numerator and the denominator. But make it sure na dapat pareho yung minumultiply nyo sa numerator at saka sa denominator. And whatever will be the result, that fraction now is equivalent to the given fraction. Say, for example, we use 2 instead of 4. So we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 2. Say, 3 times 2 is equal to 6, and 8 times 2 is equal to 16. So 6 over 16 is equivalent to 3 over 8. Yes? Thank you, Sir Albert. Yes. Yes, Ma'am Rachel. Okay. Thank you for the question. Okay. But we go back with, with equivalent fractions. Okay. How to check? This is another, uh, what do you call this one? Another concept of equivalent fractions. When you check whether the two fractions are equivalent, you can use now what we call cross multiplication. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, you can multiply the, the numerator of the first fraction to the denominator of the second fraction. For that matter, we can multiply 3 by 32. And 3 times 32, that will give us 96. So 96 will be the product of 3 and 32. While for 8 and 12, it's still equal to 96. Therefore, their product, are equal. That's why the two fractions are equivalent. That's, that, that's how you check whether two fractions, if the problem is asking you if the two fractions are equivalent from each other. Say, for example, three, is 3 over 8 and 12 over 32 equivalent fractions? So how will you solve that one? You can use now cross multiplication. So 3 times 32, multiply nyo lang yung, yung numerator ng unang fraction, that is 3, at saka yung denominator ng pangalawang fraction. So dapat alternate siya. Isang numerator sa isang fraction, isang denominator sa isang fraction. Okay? So 3 times 32, that is 96. 8 times 12, 
that is 96 also. The product must be equal so that you can say or conclude that they are equivalent fractions. And take note, the concept of equivalent mm -hmm. fractions now is best applied in dealing with proportions. When we are dealing with proportionality, best application is equivalent. Best thing where we can apply equivalent fractions now is when we are dealing with proportions. Okay, so I hope you've learned something from my discussion. At this time, we asked Ma'am Rachel to explain to us things under simplifying fractions, ordering fractions, and comparing fractions. Ma'am Rachel? Thank you, Sir Albert. Good day, my dear grade 7 students. Before I show you my slide, or the next slide, I will ask you a question. Can you still recall the greatest common factor and the LCM? Well, I hope you can still recall those things because we will be needing it in our lesson for today. Let's have simplifying fractions. A fraction is in simplest form when there are no common factors in the numerator and the denominator except one. Ang ibig sabihin, Ang greatest common factor lang ng dalawa ay 1. Wala nang mas lalaki pa doon. Let's have letter A. Simplify 2 over 6. What are the steps in simplifying fractions? A. Step 1. Get the greatest common factor or the GCF of the numerator and the denominator. And what is the greatest common factor of 2 and 6? It's 2. Next step. Divide the numerator and the denominator by their greatest common factor, which is 2. What is our numerator? Very good. It's 2. So 2 divided by 2, it will give you 1. And our denominator, which is 6, you divide it by 2. The answer is 3. So the simplified form of 2, 6 is 1 third. So, napakadali lang class. In simplifying fractions, just get the greatest common factors of the numerate factor of the numerator and the denominator. And then the next thing that you will do is divide the numerator and the denominator by their greatest common factor. Next. We have letter B, simplify 15 over 50. First, we have to get the greatest common factor of 15 and 50. And the greatest common factor is 5. Step 2, divide the numerator and the denominator by their GCF. And the greatest common factor again is 5. The numerator is 15. We need to divide it by 5, so the answer is 3. Let's divide the numerator by 5. So 50 divided by 5, the answer is 10. So the simplified form of 15 over 50 is 3 over 10. Next, we also have comparing fractions. And in comparing fractions, tulad ng nabanggit ni Sir Albert kanina, we will also be using cross-multiplication. Letter A, compare 4 fifth and 3 7. So what is the first thing that you will do? First, multiply the first numerator with the second denominator. Write the product. Sorry. Write the product above the first fraction. So what Mom, is... Rachel, yes, Sir Albert? Uh, may we go back under simplifying fractions? I have some question. Okay, what Sir if Albert? Uh, if the fraction goes this way, 15 divided by 0, what will be the quotient, ma? So 15 divided by 0, what do you think is the answer? Is it 0 or undefined? 
Sir Albert? What is the answer? 15 over 0. Let me check if you can still recall, my dear students. I think it's undefined, ma'am. Okay, very good. It's undefined. Do you have any questions, Sir Albert? Thank you, ma'am. None so far. We now move on to ordering. Uh, sorry. Or Com comparing. Yes. comparing. Okay. We go back with comparing. So the first numerator or our first fraction is 4 fifths. So we need to get the numerator of the first fraction that is 4 and then multiply it to the denominator of the second fraction. And what is the denominator of the second fraction? It's 7. So multiply 4 by 7. The answer is 28. Next step, multiply the second numerator with the, the first denominator. Write the product above the second fraction. So what is the numerator of the second fraction? It's 3. And what is the denominator of the first fraction? It's 5. So 5 times 3 will give you 15. And then next, step three, decide which product is greater and put the greater than or less than symbol between the two fractions. So kanina, ang nakuha natin na product ng numerator ng first fraction at ng second, at ang denominator ng second fraction ay 28. So yun yung nauna. And then yung 15, yun po yung product ng denominator ng first fraction at numerator ng second fraction, which is 15. So, ano sa tingin ninyo ang mas malaki? Is it 28 or 15? Or is 28 greater than or less than 15? Okay, very good. 28 is greater than 15. Thus, 4 fifth is greater than 3 seven. Next, Letter B, compare 6 7th and 4 9th. Let's have the first step. Multiply the numerator of the first fraction and then multiply it to the denominator of the second fraction. So the answer is 6 times 9 is 54. And then we proceed with step 2. Multiply the denominator of the first fraction and then the numerator of the second fraction. So what is the answer? Very good. It's 28. Now let's check. Which is greater? Is it 54 or 28? Or if 54 greater than or less than 28? Okay, very good. 54 is greater than 28. That is, thus, 6 seventh is greater than 4 ninth. I hope you understand it. Next, let's have letter C. Compare 4 ninth and 6 seventh. Sorry. Okay, let's now have ordering fractions, okay? So take note of the words ascending and descending. Kapag sinabi natin ascending, from least to greatest. Kapag sinabi namang descending, from greatest to least. Okay, anong mapapansin ninyo dito sa fraction natin in letter A? 3 8, 1 8, and 5 8. Very good. They have the same denominator. So, madali lang ang pag-a-identify kung saan dyan ang least at saan dyan ang greatest. Ano kaya ang basis natin? Ang basis natin ay ang kanilang denominator. Since pare-pareho naman ang kanil... Ay, ang basis natin ay ang kanilang numerator rather. And then, since pare-pareho naman ang denominator, madali na lang yan. So, 1 8 is the least 
fraction followed by next one, 3 8, and then the last one is 5 8. So makikita natin, syempre, ang 1 dyan ang pinaka maliit na number. Tapos, mas mataas ang 3, pero mas pinaka mataas na number ang 5. So, the answer is 1 8, 3 8, and 5 8. Take note, this is in ascending order. Paano naman kapag pinaarrange ko sa inyo yan ng descending? Ibig sabihin, pababa. So, ang mauuna naman ay 5, 8, followed by 3, 8, and then the last number would be 1, 8. Okay, we proceed with the next one. Letter B, arrange 1 half, 2 fifth, and 5, 6 in ascending order. Okay, so anong tawag natin sa fraction na ito? These are called dissimilar fractions. Bakit siya tinatawag na dissimilar? Kasi nga po, when we say dissimilar fractions, these are fractions with different denominators. Ganun ba ang kapareho lang ba sa pag-order ng similar fractions? Titingnan din ba natin kung saan dyan sa numerators yung pinakamaliit or hindi or magkaiba? Ano sa tingin niyo class? Okay, very good. Magkaiba yung step. So, mas madaling mag-arrange ng similar compared sa dissimilar. Kasi nga po, sa dissimilar fractions, we need to get the least common denominator of the given fractions. When we say least common denominator, it is the least common multiple of the denominators of the fractions. Yun yung tinanong ko kanina kung naaalala nyo pa yung pagkuha ng LCM. Kasi kailangan natin yun sa pag arrange ng fractions that are dissimilar. So, ano ang LCM ng 2, 5, and 6? Or ano ang LCD? The LCD is 30. That is the first step that you need to do. You have to find the least common denominator. After getting the least common denominator, make equivalent fractions using the LCD. At paano tayo makakagawa ng equivalent fractions dito sa 1 half, 2 fifth, 5 six in using the least common denominator. Paano kaya ang step, ang steps para makakuha tayo ng equivalent fractions? Okay, the first step is divide the LCD by the denominator which is 2. So what is 30 divided by 2? It will give you 15. So multiply it by 1. Ang magiging answer ay 15. So the answer is 15 over 30. Next. Sa pangalawa naman, we have 30. 30 divided by 5, it will give you 6 times 2. The answer is 12. Then the next one. 30 divided by 6, it will give you 5 times 5. The answer is 25. That is one way of doing it. And then the other one is, Sir Albert. Sir Albert. Sir Albert, are, are you still late? With me? Yes, yes, ma'am. Sir Albert, kindly apply, uh, kindly make equivalent fractions using the LCD because a while ago, or a while back, I presented a different way on how to, to make these fractions into similar fractions. Ang pinagawa ko kanina is 30 divided by 2, and then you multiply it to the numerator. That is why we arrived with 15. And then the next fraction, 30 divided by 5 will give you 6 and then multiply it to the numerator. It will give you 12. And then the last one, 30 divided by 6, it will give you 5. Multiply it by 5. The answer is 25. Sir Albert, how will you do? Or how will you make equivalent fractions using the LCD? I think we have the same solutions 
Okay, we have the same. If, if, if we try to use the LCD, we apply 30 divided by 6, whatever will be the quotient, we, we multiply it by the, the numerator of the given fraction. So, so 30 divided by 6, that is 5 okay. times 5 is equal to 25. Okay. Or you can also think of a certain number that when you multiply to both the numerator and the denominator, it would be equal to the given fraction. Let's say, what particular number can you multiply to 6 so that it will give a product of 30? Yeah. So what are the possible numbers? Or what is the possible number that you can multiply to 6 so that you can get 30? That's 5. 5, yes, Sir Albert. And in equivalent fraction, the rule is that whatever you will multiply to the numerator and to the to the numerator, you have also you need also to multiply it to the denominator. But for this case, you have multiplied five to the denominator. Therefore, you also need to multiply now five to the numerator. So okay. five times five that is twenty five, and then six times five that is equal to thirty. That is with the use now of the LC. D. So you can also use that uh, particular thing in solving now or, or in, in dealing now with ordering. Order. So they but can choose possible. any of the two steps I, or the two methods or Albert, Albert yes, right? No. But okay. I think it's best for you okay, to use the, the, the thing that was discussed by Mom Rachel that when you get the, the equivalent fraction of that particular fraction, then applying the LCD, you divide it by the denominator, and then you multiply it to the numerator. Okay, thank you, Sir Albert. And yes, then we have the last step. Arrange the numerators of the equivalent fractions from least to greatest since ang sinabi sa problem ay ascending order. So nakuha na natin yung similar form no the similar fractions kanina. Yung nakuha natin ay 15 over 30, 12 over 30, and 25 over 30. And now, we are ready to arrange the, these fractions from least to greatest. So, alin dito ang pinakamaliit na numerator? Is it 15, 12, or 25? Very good. It's 12. And then the next one is 15 over 30. And then the greatest is 25 over 30. 30. So, ganun lang kadali ang pag-arrange ng fraction. So, you must remember the steps on how to get the LCD since na lesson naman natin yan before. Kung nakalimutan na ninyo, review ko kasi kailangan talaga yan. Sir Albert? We have reminders for you, our dear students. Uh, please take note that we have a synchronous assessment on Friday. Please be reminded of that. And etong week na to or ang lesson natin na to ang coverage ng quiz ninyo. And all are multiple choice. So walang magkakaproblema sa quiz. And Please use your time wisely. Huwag yung nagmamadali kayo sa pagsagot ng mga katanungan. Basta ang gawin ninyo, tignan ninyo yung time and then hati-hatiin ninyo yung oras. Hindi yung 15 minutes pa lang, tapos na kayo. Yun pala, hinulaan nyo lang yung mga sagot. And who will suffer later on? Is it us, your teachers, or is it you, students? Of course, kayo yung magsasuffer later on. Ang ginawa namin ni Sir Albert, ang best namin to explain the lessons. And if you have queries, you may PM us. Huwag kayong mahihiyang magtanong. Sir Albert? Okay, thank you, Ma'am Rachel. And I'd like to give the, the summary of the things being discussed this uh, day that you have to always remember Remember. A rational number in mathematics is defined as any number which can be represented in the form of A over B, where B must not be equal to zero. 
Kaya kasi nga sabi kanina yung tinanong kanina na question, what sir if the denominator is equal to zero, so 13 divided by zero, the answer would be undefined. Okay, so also we can say that any fraction fits under the category of rational numbers where the denominator and numerator are integers and the denominator is not equal to zero. It can also be gleaned in the discussion that there are three types of fractional numbers. And what are they, Ma'am Rachel? We have... Come again, Sir Albert. The three types of fractional numbers. We have the... Proper, proper fractions, improper, yes. and then the mix. Okay, and Ma'am Rachel, I have also explained converting a type of fraction to another, what you will need to do is to follow the certain steps that I have presented a while ago. And also, fraction is in its simplest form, as Ma'am Rachel said a while ago, when there are no common factors in the numerator and the denominator except one. Mm -hmm. And lastly, to compare fractions, you have to use now the cross multiplication. May I also remind once again everyone to 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 use or to have the chance to review yourselves using the enrichment activities provided in your Facebook group. Kasi I, know, I have noticed, Ma'am Rachel, na kukunti lang yung react na nangyayari doon sa, sa enrichment activities na pinopost natin sa Facebook group. So, Sir group. Albert, okay. I will mandate my students yes, in, three, in the three sections that I am handling, I will mandate them to, to accomplish that activity. And, and, and as a form of attendance, siguro, Ma'am Rachel, they can react in that particular yeah. uh, activity para sa ganun mas malaman natin na talagang nagpa-practice sila. Anyway, those things are provided for your own sake, my dear yeah, students. Yeah, not for our, dear students. Our yes. Sake. And please be reminded also that the time schedule of your synchronous assessment on September 17, ha? it's 10.45 to 11.45. Okay? So I think that's all. Ma'am Rachel, do you have anything to say pa? Wala na, Sir Albert. Okay, maybe we now have our closing prayer. May we all bow our heads and feel the presence of the Please Almighty. Bow your heads and let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful Can you hear day. it, Ma'am Rachel? Sharing yes, Sir Albert. Our teacher and classmates. Thank you for the strength and excellence you gave us to learn and understand our lessons. Thank you to our teachers, parents, and classmates who shared to us the joy of learning. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Mom Rachel. Mom Rachel. Sir Albert and have a good day. Thank you, dear students. And I hope that you will do your best in your synchronous assessment yes, that I is scheduled on Friday. Friday. We hope you'll get high scores, our dear students. Anyway, if you have queries later on, you can just uh, post your comments or your questions in our Facebook group. Let us utilize our Facebook group para maging active naman siya. And doon nyo uh, itanong yung mga clarifications nyo as regards the topic being discussed. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.